the learn before you solve series and this video is about the second part of ideal iv characteristics of mass transistor or you call it as the drain to source current derivation in the first part of the video we have clearly understood that in a cut off region the current through an off state transistor is zero for an ideal case and for the non ideal case we will discuss separately with different set of videos and we have also continued with the drain to source current derivation for linear region we are very well aware about the voltage conditions for a linear region of mass transistor so we started our discussion for linear region with the general equation for charge on each plate of the capacitor which was equal to q equal to cv and then we have written the equation for charge in the channel which is cg into vgc minus vt and we know very well what is cg which is the capacitance of gate to the channel and vgc minus vt is the amount of voltage that is required to attract the charge to the channel to invert the p type substrate to an n type channel so that is what the amount of voltage required for inverting a channel which is vgc minus vt and we have also derived what is the vgc which is the gate to channel potential which is vgs minus vds by 2 and we also derived the average voltage which is vc which is equal to vs plus vd by 2 or else we can rewrite it as vs plus vds by 2 So this is what we have seen in the first part of the video, and the first part of the video link is provided in the description box below. Those who have not watched that particular video, please do watch that and come back for the rest of the derivation. So now our ultimate aim is to estimate this gate capacitance. The cross-sectional view of NMOS transistor is shown here with gate length denoted by capital L and gate width denoted by W. And here we have the silicon dioxide, which is the gate oxide layer, which is just beneath the gate metal, and the thickness of that particular layer is denoted by T ox. We can model this gate along with the gate oxide layer as a parallel plate capacitor with capacitance. proportional to the area over thickness which means usually we write area as length into width so here the length is the l and width is w length into width is nothing but area where the parallel plate capacitor with capacitance is proportional to the area over thickness that the thickness is nothing but the thickness of gate oxide layer which is denoted by t ox and here you can see that c ox is the gate oxide capacitance which is nothing but the ratio of epsilon ox by t ox where epsilon ox is nothing but 3.9 epsilon which is the permittivity of silicon dioxide and epsilon not is the permittivity of free space which is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 14 farad per centimeter and t ox is oxide thickness so this is nothing but your gate capacitance and this we have completely modeled using the parallel plate capacitor concept and that concept has been explained already in the first part of the video how the gate along with the gate oxide layer along with this particular p type substrate which means here it is a semiconducting substrate here we have the metal layer and in between the two conducting metal plates here we have the dielectric medium or you call it as the insulation layer or you denote it as a gate oxide layer so only because of this combination we can model that as a parallel plate capacitor this is clearly explained in the first part of the video please do watch that for clear understanding now we have clearly understood how to estimate the gate capacitance now it's time to recall our final objective our ultimate aim is to obtain the drain to source current for linear region and then for saturation region now for the linear region we know that vgs should be greater than vt and vds is relatively small then what happens ids increases almost linearly with vds just like an ideal resistor and when vgs is greater than vt the nmos transistor becomes on and electrons accumulate below the gate to form a conducting channel and again when a positive voltage is applied at the drain side these electrons drift towards the drain side at a rate proportional to the electric field between these regions and there is a current flow 
which is denoted by ids and now we know that there is a current flow so this is completely because of the movement of carriers in the channel and each carrier in the channel is accelerated to an average velocity v this is otherwise called as drift velocity also and this velocity is proportional to the lateral electric field that exists between the source and drain and we know that the notation for electric field is capital e and this is related with the proportionality constant mu where mu is nothing but carrier mobility here we are deriving the ids equation for n mos transistor so remember that therefore the charge carriers that are moving from source to drain are electrons so here the mobility charge carriers are electrons and therefore the mobility constant should be denoted as mu suffix n where it is denoting the mobility of electrons the electric field that exists between the source and drain is dependent on the potential difference between the source and drain so which means the potential difference we can write here as vds therefore the formula for electric field can be written as e equal to the applied potential difference which is vds along the channel length and the channel length is denoted by capital l and now we need to understand what is the time that is required for these electrons to cross the channel okay so that is dependent on the velocity with which the electrons move and also the distance between the source and drain that is denoted by the channel length capital l and therefore the time required for electrons to cross the channel is denoted by tch equal to l by v where l is the channel length and v is the carrier velocity therefore the current between the source and drain which is denoted by i sub x ts is the ratio of total amount of charge that is residing in the channel to the amount of time that is required for the electrons to cross the channel so all these notations we have it in our hand so that we can write the final equation for ids as ids is equal to q channel which is the total charge in the channel and the notation for time required to cross the channel is t suffix ch where we know that t suffix ch is nothing but channel length by carrier velocity and carrier velocity is equal to mu into e where e is equal to the applied drain to source voltage by channel length so now substituting this e in the carrier velocity carrier velocity becomes mu vds by capital l and we need to derive l by v which means l square by mu into vds so this is the equation for l by v which is tch once the calculation for tch which is the time required for electrons to cross the channel is over we are now concentrating the q channel which is the numerator portion of ids equation where the equation goes like this which is cg into vgc minus vt all these derivations we have done already and we are well aware about the gate capacitance also which is cox into wl and vgc is vgs minus vds by 2 now start substituting both these equations in q channel so we end up with cg is cox into wl and then we have vgc so i write vgc as vgs minus vds by 2 minus vt so this is the expansion for the total amount of charge in the channel we remodify this equation which means just a rearrangement of terms so that will end up with q channel as cox into wl 
into VGS minus VT. I bring these terms together minus VDS by 2. Just a rearrangement I have done. So now it's time to substitute Q channel and TCH in the IDS equation. After substituting for Q channel and TCH, our equation becomes like this. And I have just rearranged the terms with VDS bringing inside. We have got VDS minus VT into VDS minus. VDS into VDS becomes VDS squared by 2. And I have also cancelled the common terms in the numerator and the denominator, which is the channel length. And therefore, the equation becomes mu C ox W by L into VGS minus VT into VDS minus VDS squared by 2. And this mu C ox W by L is nothing but the device transconductance parameter and that is denoted by beta. But this frames the final equation of drain to source current for a linear region, which we can write it either in terms of mu C ox W by L or in terms of beta. If the problem is given directly with device transconductance value, then you can simply use ideas is equal to beta into this whole term. Now coming to the final derivation of drain to source current for saturation region. We are well aware that the saturation region, which means this channel getting pinched off region, starts when VDS is almost equivalent to VGS minus VT. When VDS becomes greater than VGS minus VT, we know that the channel is no longer inverted near the drain end and it is said to be completely pinched off. So once the channel is pinched off, the drain voltage has no effect on the drain current. Therefore, the drain current is now called the saturation current. Therefore, what we are going to do to obtain the drain current equation for saturation region is we take the drain current equation for linear region. Place this VDS with VGS minus VT because we know that the saturation region begins only when VDS is equivalent to VGS minus VT. Therefore, I straight away substitute VDS equal to VGS minus VT. And therefore, we will see the final equation of drain to source current for saturation region. This will become beta into VGS minus VT. Again, if I substitute for VDS also VGS minus VT, this becomes the whole square minus I, I, already I have VDS squared, so this will become VGS minus VT, the whole square by 2. So it is like 1 minus 1 by 2, so which is equal to 1 by 2. And therefore, my drain to source current for saturation region becomes beta into VGS minus VT, the whole square by 2. You can note that you don't have any term which includes VDS because we know that if VDS is greater than VGS minus VT, the channel is no longer inverted here and it becomes completely a pinched off state. Once the channel is pinched off, the drain voltage has no effect on drain current. So that is very well observed here. The drain current equation is completely independent of VDS. We have already seen these IV characteristics graph of NMOS transistor from the beginning of MOSFET video discussion. So here we can see there are three regions, cutoff, linear and saturation region. And the current is zero for gate voltages below VT, which is the cutoff region. And for higher gate voltages, the current increases linearly with VDS for small amount of applied VDS. And as VDS reaches the saturation point, the current becomes completely independent of VDS. So this IV characteristics is completely dependent on these three drain current equations which we have derived so far in this particular video. And also check the first part of the video for the discussion of drain current derivation for cutoff and linear region. So this is the final summary of drain to source current equations for all these three regions of operation. And here also I have listed the voltage conditions. Here maybe you can also include one more point where VDS can be greater than or equal to. Because when VDS is equal to VDS minus VT, you attain saturation. And when it is completely greater, the channel becomes pinched off 
and the drain current becomes beta by 2 into Tgs minus Vt the whole square. Hope this video on how to derive the drain to source current for all the three regions of operation of NMOS transistor was useful. We will try to solve certain problems which were asked in the gate exams in the future videos. Until then, stay safe. Catch you all with another interesting video. Until then, thank you all for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.